Capital One has been actively enhancing its business in recent years to propel growth. From opening Capital One cafes to their acquisition of Velocity Black, there's a lot happening here. So that brings us to some questions. Is Capital One planning to undercut the American Express Centurion card? Or is Capital One doing this to capture potential Amex card customers? Make sure you watch till the end to see what this acquisition means to Capital One. Hey there, welcome to Venture with Jazzy on this channel I talk about personal finance. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So Capital One recently acquired a company called Velocity Black, which is basically a company that does digital concierge services. So imagine having a personal assistant who can get you exclusive access to restaurants or even book all your travel and entertainment needs. Well, that's what Velocity Black does. And now Capital One will now utilize this technology to improve their customer experiences. So who is Velocity Black and are they a good company and what do they provide to their customers? Well, based on their website, they describe themselves as a leading digital concierge company that delivers travel, entertainment, shopping, and dining offerings to consumers globally. They provide discounted private first and business class air travel. They give access to sold out events, access to fully booked restaurants, and guaranteed upgrades at luxury resorts. And also on their app, I found that you can specifically save 30% on business and first class flights, guaranteed upgrades, and in the app, you can contact their team of experts and receive a guaranteed reply within a minute, 24 seven, 365 days a year. And as for memberships, I was also wondering what that would look like. So according to PYMTS.com, in 2019, the membership costs 2,800 a year and the ability to pay won't alone gain a person access to the app. So members do need to be approved and also get invited. So with this information, what does it actually mean for Capital One? Well, it's no question that everyone's trying to hop on to the AI train as Velocity Black's platform uses artificial intelligence. But as for Capital One, I do believe that this could be of benefit for three types of user groups. So for one, you have the regular users. So Capital One, they can leverage the AI technology to provide faster customer service responses and also anticipate customers' needs based on their spending habits and geographic data. And for a second type of user group, you have the high-end users. So Capital One, they can leverage the personalized concierge service to provide a more intimate experience, especially with Velocity Black's existing relationship with airports, lounges, and restaurants and events. Capital One can save a lot of effort from reinventing the wheel. And for a third type of user group, it may be from users that Capital One has not yet acquired and that is the ultra spenders. So the equivalent of the Centurion black card users because there is quite a gap between Capital One's VentureX credit card and the Amex Centurion cards. So by providing a better concierge service, Capital One might be able to create a new product that fills the gap to capture these high-end customers that don't want to pay the fee of the Centurion cards. But at the same time, these types of customers would probably expect better benefits compared to those of regular premium travel cards. So these could be the types of users that Capital One is trying to target right now. And even if they're not there yet, it does take baby steps to get there. Now, I honestly have no idea how Velocity Black is as a service, so I did want to do some research on what customers are saying about them. Now, there is some scarce information out there, but I did find this Reddit post online. So this Reddit post, it was from two years ago, and as you can see, there are quite a few negative comments, but you know, things can change within two years. But then there was someone who did comment that Velocity Black services can be useful 40% of the time where there were a few occasions where they have managed to get them tables at sold out restaurants. And then again, looking at the app store, they do have a 4.9 out of five star rating. 
rating with over 240 reviews. And then you do have plenty of positive reviews on here with people saying that Velocity Black has amazing service, saving them time and hassle, but it's really hard to judge if these comments were actually genuine or they were sponsored. Whether people are saying good or bad things about Velocity Black, I'm pretty sure that Capital One has done their research before acquiring this company. And then when you do put two companies together, they might fill each other's gap to make one strong company. So you never know what's in store for the future. And then I do think that Capital One has been proving that they are making great moves with some of their partnerships, particularly Hopper. So Capital One's partnership with Hopper has really strengthened their travel portal. I mean, if you compare their competitors like Chase, there's a clear difference between the two. And with Hopper, Capital One's travel portal offers a smoother booking experience, easy navigation, and also provides a price prediction so then you can book the cheapest flights. Actually, let's take a look now and compare Chase's travel portal with Capital One's. So let's go into Chase and try to book a hotel. So here you got a nice list of hotels, but you're not really sure where they're located, especially if you're not from this particular city. You don't know like if they're around all of the main attractions. You can go into the map view and then you're thinking, hey, I wanna be near this, but then you only get like these numbers of hotel. So this is the Capital One travel portal. And again, let's go stay in Colorado and see what happens. So here, the view is so much nicer. You have the list of hotels right next to the map view. And if you hover over the hotel that you like, like you know you like Hilton's, then it'll indicate where on the map it is. And of course, there's like various things you can do on Chase where you can lower your preferences or you can directly say you want a Hilton. But you know, sometimes people want to be more flexible. That experience is part of Hopper. Now, now let's go take a look at flights. So right now I'm looking at going to Peru. I'm not sure when I'm gonna go, but for here in January, it says I should wait, which is a really nice thing to do. It's a price prediction. Basically, when it tells you that you should book, then that's when you know, okay, I'm gonna be getting a good price. So I really think that this experience just strengthens the way users want to use their travel portal, but that's just something that I'm really excited about that Hopper has been offering for Capital One. And that's not all that Chase has been up to. They also acquired a company called Wikibuy, which helps people save money while shopping online. And they've also collaborated with Seven Rooms to create exclusive dining experiences for their card holders. So Capital One is teaming up with innovative teams to provide better experience for their customers. And now let's talk about something that you might have seen around, which is Capital One's cafes. So these cafes have been popping up all over the United States. And I actually did visit a Capital One cafe last month in Houston, and I was pretty impressed by the experience. They provide comfortable spaces, free Wi-Fi, plenty of table space for laptops, and it's just so great for remote workers or students, or you just want your sip of coffee. I'm particularly excited about cafes because when I was in college, instead of working at home or going to the library, I really I really like to work in this cafe environment because not only do I like to drink coffee, but I just found that the vibes are much different than the very quiet libraries. Nowadays, a lot of cafes purposely do not provide a great working environment. Like they purposefully do not offer huge tables or have plugs or even offer free Wi-Fi because of course, they want you to keep spending money, but if you're gonna sit there and not pay money, then you're just taking up their precious space. And of course you do have McDonald's where you can always work, but Sorry, McDonald's does not pass the vibe check for me. And not only is this cafe just a great place to work, but Capital One is of course doing this for themselves where they want to promote their credit cards there, or there's even ATMs where you can get your cash, or you can also get 50% off by paying with your Capital One credit card. So. 
a great win-win for both sides. But of course, I also have to mention Capital One's lounges and airports. If you haven't yet seen my video, I made a video about the Capital One lounge in DFW, and I just found that it was phenomenal because you can have free showers, you can book to get the massage chair, and even there's free food. Well, most lounges have free food, but the food was just very excellent. It was warm and delicious. And if any lounge has a shower, it's really just an A plus in my book. So with all these partnerships and creating cafes, what can this do for Capital One as a company? Well, for one, I feel like it's kind of raising their voice because back years ago, you didn't really know that Capital One would be a credit card company that would get you all kinds of benefits. No, they were kind of quiet. Whereas Amex, a lot of people know that if you own one of their credit cards, particularly the platinum card, you can get access to lounges and airports. And then a lot of people do know of the hefty annual fee that this platinum credit card does have, $695. So it is a little bit intimidating for for newbies to get started here. In fact, it might not be of surprise if Amex were to increase their annual fee on this platinum card again, as the cost of the annual fee on the platinum card in 2017 was $450. Four years later, they rose it all the way up to $695. That's a 54% increase in such a short period of time. There probably were a lot of people finding this card not so worth it anymore and leaving Amex. So who would be there to catch these customers? That might be what Capital One is trying to do now. So, so far I have been having a great experience with my own Capital One VentureX credit card, but I do understand that this credit card isn't really on the same level as the Amex Platinum, as it doesn't provide all the benefits and kind of misses some categories compared to this Platinum credit card. But what I can say is when companies make changes to kind of challenge each other, other, that's when improvements happen on both sides. So that's my take on recent events. I'd like to know in the comments, what do you think about this new acquisition for Capital One? Do you agree or disagree with my speculation? And if you're a Capital One customer, let me know too. Have you been to a Capital One cafe and received that 50% off drinks? Because that's just an excellent perk. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe because I'm also a new channel. Anyway, I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.